Hi there, it's Jennifer and welcome back to My Flagstaff Home. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble a charcuterie board that will dazzle at your next party. And if you're not a subscriber to My Flagstaff Home, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and YouTube will let you know when I upload new videos. how to select the items and assemble the items for your charcuterie board. You can use any kind of board. You can even use a roll of, um, of paper to put out on a table to display your charcuterie items. You can use something as simple as a cutting board or you can get something a little bit fancier like this charcuterie board that I bought off of Amazon and I'll put a link to it in the space below. This one has drawers on the sides that have utensils for the charcuterie board as well as little, let me show you, has little serving areas where you could put nuts or dried fruit. But first, let's talk about the items that go on a charcuterie board. So you want to be thinking, first of all, about meats and cheeses. And you want to have about three of each, unless you have a big board, and then you can choose more than that. But meats and cheeses, you also want to have something that's crunchy. So you can have some toasted breads, or you can put crackers of different kinds. You want to put some sweet items on your board, so you can use dried fruit, fresh fruit, um, even the nuts that you put on. You could use caramelized nuts or toffee coated nuts, so you want some kind of sweet element. And then you also want to have something that's briny, so you can use olives, uh, small pickles or pickle slices pepperoncinis, anything that has that kind of a, a tangy, briny sort of a taste to it. Okay, so now we're going to start putting this together. So we're going to think about how to display the cheeses. And so what I've decided to do is that with the Gouda cheese, I'm going to keep it in a wheel shaped with some wedges cut, cut out. The Gruyere cheese is on the firmer side, so I'm going to cut some thin slices of that. And the Havarti cheese, I'm going to cut into cubes. Okay, so you can see here that I've got the wheel of Gouda. I cut just a few slices out of it, and then I will have some of the little utensils out so that people can cut off more of the cheese. You can cut the slices all up ahead of time if you want to, or just for some visual interest, you can just cut a few of those slices. And you want to put the cheeses in different places. So I have thin slices of Gruyere. Remember I said this is a really firm cheese and it's got kind of a strong flavor. And so that's why I cut them into really thin slices. And then I have my cubes of Havarti cheese that I'm going to put right here. Now my, my board has a place that you could put crackers and things all the way around the edges. And I'm just gonna kinda see how this comes together and decide if I wanna put some of my meats or cheeses off in this ridged area, or you know, we'll just see how it works when I start putting it all together. So now I'm gonna put some meats on. I'm starting with my prosciutto. Prosciutto is really, really thin. And so if it tears, that's okay. But you wanna just kinda put them in soft little bundles this one kind of tore, so I'm just kind of placing it so that the torn part doesn't show quite as much. Some people will take these and make little flower shapes. Um, you know, you can really do whatever you want to do, but just kind of loosely place them. You can see how thin this is. So you just want to kind of loosely set them on here just in little ribbons. I'm going to take the prosciutto and let it go off into this area that's kind of designed for crackers to go in around the edges, but um, this center part is kind of small, so I'm going to use some of that space on the outer part for the prosciutto. Next I have these pieces of dry salami and they're, they're relatively small, so I'm gonna fold them in half just one time. You'll see how I'm gonna do something a little different with the pepperoni. If you've got really small pieces like this, coin size pieces, then don't worry about folding them. I don't even know in some cases if you could, 
but if you just fold these pieces in half and you sort of fan them out like you're holding a deck of cards and then you can kind of tuck those in in different places so i'm going to tuck some in beside the cheeses You can even lift some of the cheeses up and kind of, I'm, I'm putting some of the cubes kind of at the base of these salami pieces. That kind of helps hold it, hold them in place. And then with the pepperoni, these are a little bit larger pieces. So I'm going to fold them in half and then fold it again. It almost makes a little bit of a flower. And now I'm looking at the open space on here and deciding what's going to go in those spaces. So I'm going to put in some grapes. Now, one thing I want to tell you about your grapes is if you put the whole cluster down, then people have to kind of grab onto it to pull grapes off. So my recommendation is to cut off little pieces. So you're going to cut off some little clusters like this. That way, when somebody reaches in to get some grapes, they can just grab one little cluster. So I'm going to next take my pear slices and just tuck those in in some different places. When you're choosing the different items to put on your board, it's a good idea to think about color. So next I'm going to put out the crackers and the breads and I'm going to open up these side drawers because they might be nice for putting some of those things on as well. So I'm going to take these um, slices of rye bread, I cut them diagonally and then lightly toasted them. So I'm going to place them in one of these side drawers. And then I'm going to put some of these, these are the pecan nut crackers. and the flaxseed crackers. And I also have some of these sesame seed rice crackers. So if you have people who are coming to your party who maybe don't eat gluten, you could offset certain items, like you could put all of your gluten-free items over here and then the ones that do have gluten on the other side. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put some olives in these cups that I have, and I only have two cups that came with the board. But in this cup I put some feta, or not feta, they're blue cheese stuffed olives I have in that one. I have the jalapeno stuffed olives in this little cup. And then for the almond stuffed olives and the martini olives, what you can see here is I've laid some out on a piece of paper towel so that they're not really juicy and drippy. And I'm gonna add those in, in a few minutes and kind of tuck them in on the plate. But I put them on a paper towel because I don't want them to drip all over the other things on the platter. If you're including something with a really strong flavor, like these jalapeno stuffed olives, you might wanna put a little something, a tag, a label, a, a little flag on a toothpick or something to warn people <laughs> that it could be very hot. So now let me just um, tuck some of these around and I'm gonna put a little group of olives here and another little group of olives here. And I mixed them up. I didn't separate out the almond stuffed ones and the pimento stuffed. So I also have some dried fruit. I'm going to put the dried apricots down in a little pile. I have some dried figs that I'm going to tuck in over here. 
Remember that if you're using a board that's completely flat, that doesn't have rims that come up on the edges, don't put anything round on the edges or they will fall off. You wanna put those more toward the middle. This board keeps that from happening. And actually, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move the rye bread pieces over to the other side. And then now I'm gonna sprinkle in some of the dried cranberries. Move the pears over a little bit to make some more space for that. And now it's time for the nuts. And those can just kind of be sprinkled around randomly or you, or you can put them in little clusters together. So I decided to shuffle some things around and that's the beauty of putting together a charcuterie board is that you don't actually have to have everything perfect. At first you can kind of move things around. I put the rye bread over on this side. I put nuts, the salted mixed nuts in this one, and then I put some of the crackers on this side. And then I have these sweet peanuts. They're toasted, uh, toffee toasted peanuts. And I've got a little space back here where I'm gonna put those. It's nice to have a little, you know, sugary sweet little element added as well. And so I'm pretty full here. So um, I'm happy with how this looks. One other thing you could add if you wanted to is you could make space for putting some little little tiny jars or dishes that have some condiments like you could put jams or honey, different things like that or maybe even some ground mustard and you know place those around or you could just place those separately from the board itself if you're running out of room like I am. One final thing to remember is that your cheeses and meats will be best served if they're at room temperature. So if you're making this up right before your party, make sure that everything has been out for about an hour by the time your guests come. If you're making this ahead of time and storing it in your fridge, just make sure that you pull it out about an hour ahead of time to let it sit at room temperature so that everything is perfect when your guests arrive. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll give this a try. If you do, leave a comment in the space below and tell me how it went. And I'd love to have you follow me on My Flagstaff Home, so hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and YouTube will let you know when I upload videos about all things home related. Take care you guys, bye-bye.